All right, just going to do a video showing examples from Scripture demonstrating the fact that Peter, if he was a Catholic Pope, would have been the worst Pope ever in Catholic history. Because a lot of what Peter taught and a lot of what Peter, the Apostle Peter stood for directly goes against the heresies of the Roman Catholic Church and even the conduct of the popes and priests. So let's get right into this. So first of all, first point that why Peter would have been, would have been the worst Pope in history is the fact that Peter was married. Okay, Matthew chapter 8, verse 14 to 15. And when Jesus was come into Peter's house, he saw his wife's mother laid and sick, with, and sick of a fever. And he touched her head, and the fever left her, and she arose and ministered unto them. Okay, his wife's mother. Peter had a wife. However, popes, aren't, popes and priests can't get married. There had to be a celibate. Okay, and by the way, too, I should point out as well that uh, 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse one to three talks about how forbidding to marry is a doctrine of devils and i'm not talking about voluntary where you choose to be celibate i'm talking about where it's forced on you that's a doctrine of devils next uh also adding to this point by the way is the apostle paul mentions that the other apostles were married that includes peter first corinthians chapter 9 and verse 5 first corinthians chapter 9 verse 5 have we not power to lead about a sister, a wife, as well as other apostles, and as the brethren of the Lord and Cephas? Okay, Paul was not married, but the other apostles were married. It's just that plain and simple. Next point is that Peter would not let men bow down before him, unlike the popes. Uh, Acts chapter 10, verse 25 to 26. Acts chapter 10, verse 25 to 26. And as Peter was coming in, Cornelius met him and fell down at his feet and worshipped him. But Peter took him up, saying, Stand up, I myself also am a man. You see, the, the saint, a, a truly born-again saint, or an apostle in this case, uh, when someone bows, out, bows down before them, uh, they, they, they ought to get pretty, they ought to have a negative reaction. They shouldn't, they shouldn't accept that. Uh, and further examples of this is the fact that in Revelation chapter 19, verse uh, 10, and Revelation chapter 22, verse 8 to 9, even the angel wouldn't let the Apostle John bow down before him and said, no, worship God, don't bow down before me. Why? Because bowing down before someone is a form of worship. So when Catholics bow down before the Pope and bow down before Mary statues, they can deny all they want, but by scriptural standards, they are worshiping those idols. Because when you bow down, when you set up an image and bow down before it, that is idolatry. Uh, plain and simple. Next point is that Peter taught that Jesus Christ is the rock, not himself. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 4 to 8. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 4 to 8. To whom coming, as unto a living stone, disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of God and precious, ye also, as lively stones, are built up a spiritual house and a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Wherefore also it is contained in the scripture, Behold, I lay in Sion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. Unto you, therefore, uh, unto, unto you, therefore, which believe, he is precious. Unto them, unto them which be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed, the same is made the head of the corner. And a stone of stumbling, and a rock of offense, even to them which stumble at the word, being disobedient, whereunto also they were appointed. Who is he referring to there? Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the chief cornerstone. Jesus Christ is the rock. Okay, He is, he is your foundation, not a man. But the problem is, is that when, when Catholics say, oh, Peter's a rock, they're basically admitting that their foundation is based on a man, not on Jesus Christ. It's that simple. Uh, and they can try to twist it all they want, but also I want to point out too, by the way, um, the fact where it talks about in verse 6, wherefore it is contained in the scripture, Peter's referring back to Isaiah chapter 28, verse 16. So in our scripture demonstrating that Jesus Christ is the rock. Uh, next point is that Peter taught that the saint is eternally secure and can have assurance of their salvation, contrary to the Catholic doctrine that it's a sin to have presumption of your salvation or, or to presume you're saved. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3 to 5. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance incorruptible, and undefiled, and that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you, who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. You're kept by the power of God. Why? It's it's God who's giving you salvation, not the popes and priests. You see, what the popes and priests, how they maintain control over kings of Europe, is that they would basically threaten to take away their salvation if they uh, disobeyed them. But the fact of the matter is, is that 
God is the one who, ha who, who, who controls your salvation. John chapter 10, verse 27 to 30 shows that your salvation is in the hands of Jesus Christ. Okay, not in the hands of popes and priests. Oh, I thought I heard it start raining outside. But that's the fact of the matter. And that scripture also destroys this idea that, oh, the Pope can take the, the Pope can revoke your salvation by excommunicating you. No, the Pope has no authority to do that. The Pope has no ability. He wishes he did, but he has no ability to, to wield your salvation like that. Next point is that Peter taught that you're born again with the word of God, not man's traditions. First Peter chapter one, verse eighteen to twenty three. For as much as ye you know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as, a, as of a lamb, without blemish and without spot, who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest uh, in these last times for you, who by him who do, sorry, who by him uh, who do believe in do believe in God, not good at reading on a computer, who by him do believe in God that raised him up from the dead and gave him glory that your faith and hope might be in God. Seeing that ye are purified your souls and obeying the truth through the spirit unto unfeigned love of the brethren, uh, see that ye love one another with a pure heart fervently, being born again not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, but of, of incorruptible by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. You see, the Catholic traditions, the, these man-made traditions, they're going to fade away. But the Word of God abides forever, and you're redeemed by that, not by the Catholic traditions or the tradition of your fathers, as what Peter's referring to in, in verse uh, 18. Next point is that Peter taught that Jesus Christ suffered once for sins. It wasn't some kind of continual thing of the Roman Catholic Mass. Okay, First Peter chapter 3, verse 18. First Peter chapter 3, verse 18. For Christ also hath once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit. Goes against the Catholic Mass. Next point is that Peter taught that salvation and grace is through the righteousness of Jesus Christ, not by your works or by the sacraments or the popes or priests. Okay? Uh, 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 1 to 2. Peter chapter 1, verse 1 to 2. Simon Peter, a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ, to them who have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior Jesus Christ. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus and of Jesus our Lord. It's Jesus Christ and his righteousness that, that is, is why you're saved, not by anything you do. Your works are not going to have any merit before God in terms of in, in terms of salvific uh, reasons. Ephesians chapter two, verse eight to nine, Romans chapter eleven, verse six, Romans chapter three, verse 22 down to verse 28, uh, 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 8 to 9, and, and Titus chapter 3 verse 5, and many others too, show that your works mean nothing before God in terms of salvific reasons, in terms of, in terms of determining your salvation, I'll put it that way. Uh, your works are the fruits of your salvation, not the cause, not the, not the reason why you are saved. That simple. But 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 19 to 21 is an example where, which goes to my next point, Peter taught that the written word of God is the more sure word of prophecy, and this alone is to be taken heed to. Okay, Second Peter chapter 1, verse 19, down to verse 21. We, uh, says we have also a more sure word of prophecy, whereunto ye do well, that ye take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place, until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts, knowing this first that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they are moved by the Holy Ghost. In other words, it was God who gave us the scriptures, not the Catholic Church. The Catholic Church didn't give us the Bible. Okay? And further proof of that is 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 13, showing that, once again, the word of God did not come from man, but it came from God. It's that simple. So these are just some examples of Catholic doctrine and practices being contradicted and even rebuked by Pope Peter. So if he was the he, if he was the first pope, he was pretty bad at it, quite frankly. So don't be deceived. By the way, it's whole, it's a rhetorical thing. By the way, I mean Peter was never a pope. Peter was never in Rome in the first place, and there's a whole other thing on that. But if Peter was the first Catholic pope, which there's no historical or scriptural evidence for that, he would have been the worst pope in Catholic history. So anyway, in fact, he would have been been condemned as a heretic by the Catholic Church if he was if he did become a pope and start doing all this stuff. So anyway, don't be deceived. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye.